In this lesson, we're going to learn about the factored form of a quadratic function. So what exactly is the factored form, and why is it important? Well, let's take a look. Suppose we have a function written in standard form. We can use the rules of factoring to rewrite that function in what we call factored form. Those factors, it turns out, are very useful. We can use those factors to identify the zeros or x-intercepts of a function. Remember, the x-intercepts, or the zeros, are the place where the graph will pass through the x-axis. This is where the output is zero. So let's take a look at some examples and see how this is done. Before we get started, it's important to say that you need to feel comfortable with your factoring skills in order to do this. If you're having trouble with factoring, be sure to go back and check out the videos on factoring before you proceed with this lesson. In our first example, we have the function y equals x squared plus 5x plus 6. We want to do two things. First, write the function in factored form, and then second, find the coordinates of the zeros, or the x-intercepts. We begin by factoring x squared plus 5x plus 6. When we factor, we come up with two binomials, x plus 2 times x plus 3. This is the function in factored form. Now we can use those factors in order to find the coordinates of the zeros. Here's how we do it. We take each of the factors, x plus 2 and x plus 3, and we set them equal to 0 so that we have two small equations. We then solve each of those equations for x. In the first one, we end up with x equals negative 2. In the second, we end up with x equals negative 3. Those are the x values of the zeros, so our zeros are located at the point negative 2 comma 0 and negative 3 comma 0. Those are the x-intercepts of the function. If we look at the graph, you'll notice that the graph passes through the x-axis at those two points, negative 2, 0 and negative 3, 0. We can find the x-intercepts, or the zeros, by simply using a skill that we're already familiar with, that of factoring. Exercise 2 is for you to try. Can you write this function in factored form, and then use that to identify the coordinates of the zeros? Please pause the video here, and come back when you're ready to check your answer. Let's see how you did. We began by factoring the trinomial x squared plus x minus 20. That gives us the function f of x equals x minus 4 times x plus 5. We can then use that factored form to find the coordinates of the zeros. We take each of the factors, x minus 4 and x plus 5, and set them equal to 0. Solve each of those small equations to get the x value for the x-intercept. We have zeros at the point 4 comma 0, and negative 5 comma 0. Those are the zeros, or the x-intercepts, of the function. If we were to look at a graph of this function, you'll see that we indeed do have those zeros, at negative 5, 0, and at 4, 0. Now let's take a look at another example. This time, we have a function that's a trinomial with a leading coefficient of 5. Once again, we factor. When we factor, we end up with 5x plus 2 times x plus 3. We write the f of x in front, and we now have the factored form of the quadratic function. We use those factors to find the zeros. 5x plus 2 equals 0, and x plus 3 equals 0. Solve each of those equations. This first one actually ends up as a fraction. x equals negative 2 fifths. That's okay. The second equation ends up x equals negative 3. We have a 0 at negative 2 fifths comma 0, and we have a 0 at negative 3, 0. Again, if we look at the graph, we see that those are the positions where we have our zeros, at negative 3, 0, and negative 2 fifths, 0. It all comes down to being comfortable with factoring. If you can factor, then you can easily rewrite a quadratic function in factored form and then use that factored form to find the zeros. Here's another example for you to try. 
can you write the function y equals 3x squared minus 11x plus 6 in factored form and then find the zeros? Please pause the video here and come back when you're ready to compare answers. Let's see how you did. We begin by factoring. The trinomial factors to 3x minus 2 times x minus 3. So here is the function in factored form. We now use the factored form in order to find the zeros. We write each of the factors equal to zero, and then we solve the two little equations. x equals two-thirds, and x equals three. Those are the x values of the zeros, so we have two-thirds comma zero, and three comma zero. Once again, if we were to look at the graph, we would see that these are the two points where the parabola passes through the x-axis. What if we have a function that has a greatest common factor? Here we have the function y equals 2x squared plus 12x plus 10. We have a greatest common factor of 2, so we begin by factoring that out. Now we factor the trinomial in the parentheses. The final factored form is y equals 2 times x plus 1 times x plus 5. That's the factored form of the quadratic function. Now we'll find the zeros. We take each of those factors, 2, x plus 1, and x plus 5, and set them equal to 0. But something strange happens with the first one. 2 equals 0 really makes no sense, so there's not a 0 or an x-intercept to find there. x plus 1 equals 0. We come up with x equals negative 1. x plus 5 equals 0 we come up with x equals negative 5. That gives us our two zeros, negative 1, 0, and negative 5, 0. Again, if we look at the graph, we can see that's exactly where the parabola passes through the x-axis. Those two points are the x-intercepts. Here's a quadratic function for you to try that has a greatest common factor. Factor out the common factor and then factor the trinomial that results. Once you've written the factored form, find the coordinates of the zeros. Please pause the video here and come back when you're ready to compare answers. Let's see how you did. First we have a greatest common factor of 3. So we factor out that common factor, which leaves us the trinomial x squared minus 5x minus 14. We factor that trinomial so our final function is f of x equals 3 times x plus 2 times x minus 7. Once again, we find the zeros by setting each of those factors equal to 0. 3 equals 0 makes no sense, so there's no number to find there. x plus 2 we solve and we have x equals negative 2. x minus 7 equals 0 we solve and we have x equals 7 which gives us the zeros, or x-intercepts, at negative 2, 0, and 7, 0. Once again, if we were to look at the graph, we would see negative 2, 0, and 7, 0 are exactly where the parabola passes through the x-axis. Now you won't know just about everything you need to know, but what if we have a quadratic function like this, that is a difference of two perfect squares? Remember, that can be factored. x squared minus 36 can be factored to x plus 6 times x minus 6. So this function is f of x equals x plus 6 times x minus 6. We follow the same process to find the zeros. Take each factor, set it equal to 0, and then solve. x equals negative 6 x equals positive 6, which gives us our x-intercepts, or zeros, at negative 6, 0, and positive 6, 0. Again, we can verify that on a graph, negative 6, 0, and positive 6, 0 are where the parabola passes through the x-axis. The last example is for you to try. Can you rewrite the function y equals x squared minus 81 in factored form and then use that to write the coordinates of the zeros? Please pause the video here, try the problem, and come back when you're ready to compare answers. Let's see how you did. We factor the difference of perfect squares to rewrite the function in factored form. 
y equals x plus 9 times x minus 9. Now we want to find the zeros. We use the factors, each set equal to 0, and then solve the little equations, x equals negative 9 and x equals positive 9. Those are the x values of the zeros, so the points are negative 9 comma 0 and positive 9 comma 0. Those are the locations of the x-intercepts on the graph. We can verify this by looking at the graph of the function. Notice that 9 and negative 9 are where the parabola passes through the x-axis. And now you know everything you need to know in order to determine the factored form of a quadratic function and to find the zeros. Remember, you can learn more about quadratic functions in Mr. Dory's Algebra Handbook, available at www.dorypublications.com.